<laughs> Hello, freak bitches. Coaches. He worked with this girl, Susan, for years. That helped. You get a different perspective. Oh, you know what? I didn't think of that. Right. I didn't think that way. Yeah, you're right. So that kind of shit. Now, look, ultimately, you get on the set, you're going to do what you do, and the director's going to, hey, Steve, you know, you shouldn't be so angry there. Whatever, you know, he thinks, and the guy that wrote it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I work very hard at it, and I worked for years now. Now, don't forget, I'm making a living for 16 years as an actor. Yeah, I left the Riviera in 2000. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, 16 years. So, And I've done a lot of shit. This is you then. saying that 2000 was 16 years ago makes <laughs> me go, what? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, I, I left there. I started on The Sopranos in 99. I, I went back and forth for a year. You know, I didn't quit. The, I did six episodes. I was still at the Riv. What is it like? That one must have been fucking strange. I was still at the Riv, and then I booked it for 10 years. I, you know, I booked the Riv until 2010. Chris yeah. Rock said, you're still dipping your toe in that shit? <laughs> I said, why not? They're paying me. What the fuck? How hard is How it? How hard is it to fucking book three comics a week? I could do it in three days, book up six months. That's you know? hilarious. You know, I book, I book guys that, uh, you know, that didn't work much you know well i think your point is the really important part of what you're saying is like the getting a different perspective where a guy like gandolfini you would you'd imagine he was so good you would imagine that he probably looked at it from all sorts of different angles yeah, yes he did and you saw a lot of different colors yeah. but he you know he would work 16 hours okay 16 hour days on the sopranos he's in he's there so i mean the guy gets up whatever time he got up then he's got to go home and learn tomorrow's stuff so sometimes he told me he'd be sitting in the chair. He'd fall asleep for two hours. He wakes up. She's still there, just waiting for him to wake up, and they're going to work on the stuff for tomorrow. Whoa. Yeah, and, and, and nine months of that. Don't forget, you know, the Sopranos, Joe, they were, when I got on the show, it was like eight days. I came on the second season, so it was like eight days for an episode, then nine, then ten. At the last season, it was, we, we shot nine shows in nine months. Holy shit. Yeah. You know, it was like shooting a movie. There's no commercial, so it's a full hour. But, you know, that's what it was, man. It was long. Wow. It was like shooting a movie. Wow. I a mean, month an episode. I, I, the, the first episode was 17, 18 working days. Lorraine Brockle said to me, you're going to work more in this episode than I will the whole season. Because she only worked one day an episode. You know, she had the greatest job in show business. Wow. They shot that in one day. Oh, that's beautiful yeah. for her. Well, you know, it was a great part too. Yeah, it was great. You know, but I, I think the the coaching wise, and I think a lot of it is, you know, your focus, your concentrate, know your stuff, know your lines. I mean, you're an actor, you know, know your shit. Don't come in and be like a smart yeah. ass. Yeah, maybe I paraphrase. Know your stuff. Respect what's on the page. You know, that's I'm a I'm a big believer in that. Yeah. On the Sopranos, you didn't ad lib the word "thuh," and I'm not joking. You, there was a, there was a time that I had to say, uh, I gotta go. And the line was, I have to go. And they kept correcting me and correcting me and correct. Cause I just, you know, I gotta go. No, I have to go. I don't know why, what, where, and I didn't question it. Right. You know? I mean, you know, but. That's a crazy amount of work when you're talking about with Gandolfini. That's really, that's still fucking with my head. Yeah. Now listen, Jim was one of my closest friends. Couldn't find a better guy. He worked. Harley saw his kids, you know, his kid, you know, uh, his daughter wasn't born, you know, uh, uh, while he was on The Sopranos. But it was like no life. You could completely gave up your life. Not the rest of us, because there were so many characters. You know, I didn't, I had a couple of episodes where I worked a real lot, but, you know, otherwise. That just can't be good for your health. Well, it was, a, you know, a lot of guys. I mean, I've, yeah. I've read, uh, I think Jimmy Smith's I read years ago, NYPD. He said he couldn't take, it was 18-hour 18, 18 days. Yeah. And yeah, he was making a fortune. He said, I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. No, I've, I've, I've had friends that have been on dramas before, and it's the same thing. They would tell me that they just, they just couldn't do it. They just they would you do know, it, and they would just, they would be, at, when the season would wrap, they would go, this has got to be my last season. I yeah, can't do this anymore. Yeah, I mean, anymore. you know, it's, it's a point with the money. Now, you know, the thing, what, what I love about Blue Bloods is, there's a lot of characters, so there's different stories, so it's not like it's that. It's not my signature. Whoa. It's hanging up. It's, it's you know, like seven of us, but it's not my signature. How crazy is that? Yeah, somebody, Someone's got a fake the signature hanging up on a nice restaurant. Bobby Bacala with a fat, <laughs> fake stomach. That's it's, it. it's from the days when I wore the fat stone. Oh, they made you put like a prosthesis on, For two on, right? years, yeah. Then I got fat enough on my own. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get fat enough just so you don't have to wear that no, thing? No, no. One day, Chase, uh, you know, I... I 
you know, when I first got the role, I was seeing all these jokes like your cows on with legs and your fat fuck and your thing. And I'm going, I'm not that much fatter than Gandafini. I yeah. was starting to think that maybe they cast the wrong guy. I'm not joking. I'm saying, could it be? I mean, these jokes don't make sense. And then they called, oh, you got to come in for a fat suit. So I wore oh, this ridiculous wow. thing. Then the second year, they made it like a really nice one, like a costume, <laughs> like a costume shop. It had like tits and everything. <laughs> and uh, a costume shop in uh, like a Broadway costume thing. And uh, and then one year, I was going back and I was at a fitting for the, the fourth year, you know, like the, the next year. And uh, he looked at me and he went, yeah, you don't have to wear that anymore. I said, all right. So I'm assuming. <laughs> it was pretty embarrassing at first. <laughs> at first, I was prancing around. They, they had an ass on me, too, like a big ass. They put a fake ass Yeah, on and me. he was going, ah, not too big. And I was, like, going, walking back and forth, like, Oh, parading. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's fucking humiliating. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Landisberg, remember the comment? He said to me, did they ask your permission to do that? And I said, no, Steve. He said, I wouldn't have fucking did that. I went, well, I wouldn't have got the job, you know? That was a weird time when The Sopranos came out because all of a sudden there was like a lot of fake mob guys, a lot of fake connected guys, well, a lot of fake Italian. You know what I mean? They're like, still around. I call it gig, Guinea Actors Guild. Ah. Gag. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like that acting that way became in fashion. They started. They they used to hang around wherever we were. They really? were around. They were extras. They was. They're still around. But there was. You know, we did an appearance in a casino. We just do a lot of that stuff, you know. They were everywhere. They were everywhere. They were hoping to get on the show. Hey, come on, you did the show. I could do the, I could do the show. Oh, I remember, no. I remember Michael Imperioli one time. We were up in uh, Reno, and there was one of them guys, oh. and he was playing blackjack, and, you know, and uh, he said, come on, put me on the show. I could do what you do. I, Michael oh. just went off on him. I've been fucking trying for 20 years, you know, blah, blah, blah. I've been acting. And you, you know, and he got... He he hit Michael, and Michael was right. He got really pissed off. This is just one of those fucking goombas, you know. And the guy, I could do what you do, you know. Oh, they're like, the worst. Exactly. There's like this. There's, there's wannabes, but there's something about Guinea wannabes. Oh, they just, are, uh, there's a lot. Me. There's a handful out here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah there's yeah. plenty. And the thing here, they congregate together. Yeah. When well, they try to like clang up, hey Joe, you're Italian, right? Yeah. <laughs> you're Italian, 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 you're Unless, and I get a lot of scripts, Joe, you know, of that crap. You know, they make these, I call them backyard movies, you know. Yeah. You're never going to see them, you know, right. whatever they're getting paid. I'm not interested because it's that same thing. I'll fuck you, I'll break your fucking mm -hmm. head. You're gonna, oh, you know who I am? You know who my uncle is? It's like a Dom Herrera sketch. Absolutely. <laughs> but, it's, but it's true, but they write this. And I say, right. how does people give them the money? How do you get the money to make these movies? Well, I think for a I, while people were making them just because Sopranos was so popular. But now, uh, unless you're going to beat Sopranos, Goodfellas, you know, the, 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 what's the great mob movies? Sopra you know, uh, Sopranos, show, Sopranos, Goodfellas, Goodfellas Casino, Casino. Uh, Ra uh, Raging Bull had mob sure. elements, right? Great right. movie. Uh, what am I missing? There, there was, uh, There's got to be a few of them. You know, some great, you know, great, great mob movies. But right. Now, after The Sopranos, I mean, you don't see you know, The Godfather, Godfather 1, right, 2, you know, there, there, there was some, but you're going to have to beat that. Then they, they tried, they tried to do some mobby stuff. Uh, Ray Donovan's work, and that's a good show. That's a good show. I mean, that's from an Irish per perspective. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think what happened with those movies was, or, or uh, the, 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 that show, rather, is it, it was those, you had a movie every week. Exactly. So like every subject was covered: betrayal, gambling, it pussy, was funny. murder. It was funny. It was funny. Funny elements. It was very smart. That was something. You know, I would go. I would be around, and people go, "I don't like that show you're on. I'm Italian. Have you ever oh, seen the show? Yes. Have you ever seen the show? No, I haven't seen. It. It's like it's like I asked somebody. I, I I don't I don't watch porn. I hate porn. Have you ever seen it? No. Well, then how do you know you don't like it? Or did you see it? Or do you watch it? You know what I mean? But they're, they're, they're holding signs up. Hey, well, no porn. Uh. Well, that was a big thing, right? The Italian-American blah, oh, blah, blah society was protesting you, I, against it. How about this story? I wrote a kid's book, Nicky Deuce. Okay? Uh, it took place in Brooklyn. 
And we turned it into a movie for Nickelodeon, you know, which I we did. And it's one of Gandolfini's last movies. And I had Michael Imperioli in it and Sirico and, uh, uh, and Nickelodeon made the movie. But when I was when I wrote the book, I was doing book signings. And, you know, it's about a kid, a fish out of water, who goes back to Brooklyn. He grew up in the suburbs and he winds up with uh, a kid, an Italian neighborhood, Benson Harris in Brooklyn. And he gets into some mischief. I don't even call it trouble, but... so. This guy kept writing uh, letters and shit and killing me on the internet and, and writing letters to the bookstores ahead of me getting there. You know, like saying that he's, uh, you know, derogatory against Italians and he's uh, now he's bringing kids into it and blah, 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 blah. So finally, I get the guy's number and I call the guy. I swear to you. I say to him, listen, I think his name is I think his name is Anthony. I said, listen, Anthony, blah, 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 blah. This is the world I know. Like, rappers rap about what they know. This is what I know, you know? And uh, he said to me, I said, you know, uh, what can I do? Tell me what I can do. Let's fix this. I mean, because, you know, you know, you, you, blah, 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 blah. He said, well, you can make a donation to my organization. It was the Italian-American bullshit. I said, you got to be kidding me, and I hung up on it. <laughs> True story. You tried to it. shake me down. Yeah. And there's a whole bunch of When the movie came out, we got some heat for the Nicky Deuce movie. Really? And it's not really about mob. It's, you people know, just want attention. I mean, exactly. You they know, want attention. And, and they did that with the Sopranos. But people would say all the time, you know, Joe, uh, yeah, I don't watch the thing. I'm an Italian. You guys talk bad about Italians. No, they didn't. They, they, they showed what really was. I thought it was very authentic, you know. Oh, well, The Sopranos is as authentic as it gets. If you know anybody like that, you know those people exist. Absolutely. To, and I to think pretend was, they don't exist is offensive. Exactly. And I think it was a story that needed to be told. I don't yeah. think uh, we're putting Italians down. This is what it is. Well, it was know? such a fascinating show because Gandolfini was a bad guy. Like his character, but Tony you're rooted Soprano. For him. Yeah. You're rooted for a bad guy. <laughs> a murderer. You're rooted for a murderer who cheated on his wife, yeah. stole, robbed, shook people down. Absolutely. But he was your guy. He was, I think, the first, I, I think, I could be wrong, the first, like, anti-hero that people rooted for on television. I think you're right. I, I, I can't imagine Before anybody. that, it was, you know, you, you root for the guy, you know. Well, he was a real anti-hero. You know, I yeah, mean, so a, he murderer, was a murderer, a con man, I mean, all the above. Stole, it, it, they, they didn't just do it to people in the mob. They did it to people, you know, like on the show. It wasn't just within each other. Yeah. They went outside. They were robbing yeah. people and, yeah. and, and busting up, uh, uh, you know, businesses yeah. and doing all the stuff that they do. Yeah, you know? it was great. <laughs> show was good. I it was very small. It. it was a very small show. And if it would, if they put it back on now, they would get higher ratings than some of their shows now. I, I bet they would. It's well, it was so good. I think a lot of people <clears throat> forgot how good it was, and it also changed a lot. If you go to the first episode, the first episode was essentially like a slapstick comedy. You remember that? No, I know. You remember Lorraine Brock? Not Lorraine Brocco. Uh, who was the woman that played uh, his wife? Edie Falco. Edie Falco. Edie Falco had a fucking machine gun, and like uh, the the, the oh, daughter was trying that. to sneak I, I out. I haven't she's, seen it in years. She's outside with a machine gun, oh, pointing funny. at her. It was way more slapsticky. It was weird. It was but, like a comedy. Well, they shot the uh, the show aired in '99, right? I think they shot that like in '98, if I'm not mistaken. Really? If I'm not mistaken, in 98, I, I believe, or 97 even, they go back and then it took six months and then they started shooting them. You know, mm. well, uh, how how David Chase did it, he didn't do it like a regular show where you shoot it and then in three weeks it's on the air. You know, uh, he put them all in the can. They were finished and locked and, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, he, you know, you finished your, your whatever it took, nine months. And then he edited them and blah, 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 and then they aired. You know, it was done a completely different way. Wow. You know, also, they would, uh, they would, you know, if they didn't like what you did, I mean, he replaced you and you never even knew it. Really? Yeah, he replaced you. You know, like uh, I, I had a scene with a guy and they called back, you know, a month or so later and said, you got to shoot the scene again with a different actor. For whatever reason, whether... You know, the guy didn't do a good job or uh, he looked too young or too old or just didn't fit. He had the he had the uh, capacity to just shoot it again. If, if a scene didn't work, he rewrite the scene, you shoot the scene again 
you know, three months later. What's interesting about those kind of shows, too, is that they're so big and so popular that you become that character. Whoever that character is, you become that guy, and yeah. you're that guy forever. Well, that's, of course. I mean, that, and that, that's yeah. part of the deal. That's okay. I had no career before that, so it's not but like... Not, uh, I'm not saying know. with you, but I'm saying, uh, like, there's some people that have... Like, you've worked since then, yeah, and you'll continue yeah. to work, but there's some people that were on that <clears throat> show that were really famous when that show was on the air, and they vanished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're in the, you know, you got people all over the world watching it. I mean, I've been stopped with people literally from all over the world that have watched the show. It was like a cult hit like nothing that ever hit before. Like Big Pussy's Big Pussy for the rest of his fucking yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. You know, but Vinny's also, he, he embraces that too, you know what I mean? He right. embraces that. For him, and it works. And right. He's okay. He works. He does his things. No, he's always going to work. He's a very good actor. Yeah, and Don't he's got his music. He's a musician and stuff. But I, I hear you. you know, yeah. Especially the name, Big Pussy. That was a big thing. Well, People like to say that. Yeah, yeah, you know? they do like to say that. But also his, the, you know, the scene in the movie when they kill him, like the whole the whole way it plays out, it was very intense. It's like, whoa, I can't believe they killed Big Pussy. Well, that was the big thing. Spoiler too. alert. It was the first time, uh, too, a regular cast member gets killed. Yeah. I mean, they're not killing the, you know, uh, the guy from Friends. You right, know? exactly. David Trimmer ain't getting killed, yeah. you know. Oh, one, you know, one Friday night, oh my God, they killed David Trimmer. There's five friends now, yeah. you know. So yeah. that was a, a big character that gets killed, and then big characters kept getting killed, which is why guys were worried. I mean, there was a c real concern that you yeah. were going to get killed off the show. The oh, more yeah. material they gave you, yeah, the more of a shot you're getting killed. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and, and let's not kid ourselves. It's not just you know you're out of work. They just put you out of work in the what? biggest show. Like that, when that, when Gandolfini killed Imperioli. I was like, whoa, yeah. holy shit. He pinched his nose there. Yeah, whatever. like, what? But, but, the but you know fuck? what? Once you made it into the last season, it was like, hey, listen, you know, we, right. you, you, you know we're done, you're paid, however the story ends. It's probably better. Yeah. If I would have got killed early on, I would have felt really shitty, I'll tell you. And right. saw all the stuff that happened. Because, you know. Right. You know what I mean? And right. Plus, you know, we, didn't make, we started making money. Towards the middle and the end, you know, not the guys at the beginning weren't making a lot of money. Well, those shows are hard to make money on, aren't they? Like HBO is. No, nah, they, they don't worry. You know, HBO pays, <laughs> and they pay now even better. And the shows off the air nine years. Wow. No, you know, we wind up, you know, and then there was other money coming in because you had the opportunities to do other shit, you know. Well, that show was also groundbreaking in that it was one of the first shows like that, and now HBO specializes in those kind of shows. Uh, and I mean, so does AMC, do. mm -hmm. and so does Showtime. Yep, yep. I mean, you know. Yeah. It all kind of came from The Sopranos. This is the first time they're, they're hiring, a, you know, a, a fat, bald guy. You know, Jim right. wasn't a leading man. You right. Know? I mean, they, they wanted, you know, you figure the good looking mob guy you know what i mean but he was intense and charismatic oh, and what a bro, fucking actor girl, he was the too. girls loved him and, yeah. you know we used to joke you know they say tv puts 10 pounds on you i say it takes 50 off you <laughs> <laughs> well he was just it was a, such an interesting character he was so intense and like when he got into that murderous rage like you fucking bought it hook line and sink absolutely it. when you acted with him you didn't have to uh you know, you didn't have to act scared. Like, if it was a scene, I got to be scared, you're going to yell at me. You know, he was fucking, you know. He gave you the whole thing, you know. Yeah. When we had that fight, you know, me and him had that fight in the first episode of that last season. I mean, you know, we shot that for a day and a half. Whoa. That was tough. He was choking me. He said, <laughs> he said listen, you know, let, let, let's try to take this as far as we can. And we fucking took I was pulling his hair. He was fucking choking me. I was getting cut from the... I was wearing a you know necklace, you know. I was getting cut from that. I mean, we were banged up. Wow. Banged up, for real. And that's why it looked real. It was like two fat, out-of-shape guys Beating fighting. the fuck out of each other. I mean, other. they don't... You know, guys, it's not Steven Seagal. Where, right. You know what I mean? You know, look, you, you, you know. What the hell? This was like a fight. Like a... So when you do something like that, like how hard do you hit each other? You know, as hard as you, you know you could without really hurting, and he had said that. Let's go as far as we could, and we were, you know. But he, how do you he do was that? Saying, saying, pull my hair, pull my hair. <laughs> you know, he's fucking pulling his hair, and, and he's choking me. Go ahead, go further. You know, you know. Like I said, we, you know, we're good friends. You, you know, if you do it with a stranger, it could get a little yeah. funky. You know what I mean? Like, hey, well, you know, you know. <laughs>